I'm going to talk about all the heavy languages. Let's ask you before you pronounce your name. Plus plus and show us all how what wonderful polyglots we all are. Now, famously, <clears throat> Scott Myers told us that C++ is a federation of four languages, and he named C, object-oriented C++, template C++, and the standard library. Now, Scott Myers is obviously always right, but in this case, he was wrong. There are a whole lot more than these four. I'm not going to go into these four. Let's talk about all the other languages of C++. Now, the first set of languages that you need to know in order to work with C++ are the build languages. <clears throat> you can't really work with C++ without knowing one of them, and without building C++, it's meaningless. It doesn't do anything. It's very nice for newcomers when they learn how to write the code, and <clears throat> they're very eager to learn. But once they finish the tutorial, and they start doing these complex things like finding libraries and linking with them, they're ill-equipped to do that. They need to learn some build language. <clears throat> so in order to work with C++, you need to know at least one build, uh, build language and <clears throat> enjoy being a newcomer and deciding which language should you learn in order to work in it. The second language that you need to know is the C preprocessor. Now, <clears throat> the C preprocessor is a very surprising thing for newcomers because C++ in the wild doesn't look like C++ as it's taught. There are so many hidden defines, <clears throat> if defs, that modify the structure and the meaning of the code. Um, and make your code look more like an Instagram post than the <coughs> clear syntax that we were all taught. Now, if you think that the C preprocessor should be just counted as a part of C, you're wrong. The C preprocessor is its own agent. It's an own agent going around spreading chaos and confusion wherever it goes using jarring syntax and arcane macros. It is <coughs> Turing complete in theory not in practice and confusing all around. Now, the next set of languages that we need to take into account are the different C++ versions. Let's take an example, this piece of code. In old ye olde C++, it means allocate a new integer in the heap, and here's <clears throat> somewhere to save the pointer. In modern C++, it does the same way but it does not mean the same thing to the reader. To the reader, it means something else completely. It means that I hope the writer had a very good reason to do this and not use safe, smart pointers, but er, I'm not, I can't be sure. Now, this distinction is important because once you understand this, you understand something like Every Stack Overflow answer that was written before 2011 is almost categorically wrong. There's, you can be almost certain that there's a better, safer, more readable way to write the code that the answer describes. And hey, if the meaning changes when you write the same thing, it's a different language. But that's not the most complex language in C++. The most complex language is of course, the C++ error messages. Each C++ compiler has its own hundred line long way of telling you that you passed a vector of variance via a pointer instead of a reference and that you're completely wrong in doing that. It won't tell you what you did wrong, but it will name practically every header in the, C++, in the standard library trying to explain all the things it tried to do but failed in order to make me happy. And the joy of this final language is that once you've overcame the error message, once you understood how to read it and how to fix the error, you go by the C++ best practices and then try to compile your code in another compiler, find new error messages in new formats and enjoy this process all over again.
we know so many languages as C++ programmers. What joy, what joy.